Okay, I wanted to talk a little bit about internal versus external forces. The, um, the external forces, right, those are the ones that we've been talking about most. I've tacked that word on the front of lots of different statements associated with Newton's laws, right? But let's talk a little bit about internal versus external forces because it's going to illustrate a couple of other problem-solving techniques that we can use when we're talking about forces and how they relate to the motion of objects and whatnot. So I've got here um, some person holding uh, quite a bit of weight over their head. And we'll uh, put some ground under them. And this won't be uh, technically a free body diagram because we're going to have the ground in there and whatnot. But um, let, let's see, let me get a different color. Go blue. And we want to consider the weight and this person all as one object, okay? So the weight and the person, not the earth underneath them or anything like that, okay? But both of those objects together. Because he is, after all, holding on to the bar, and so it's reasonable to consider them sort of one interconnected object. So if we do that, well, then um, all the forces of him pushing up on the bar and the bar pushing down on him are going to be internal to the system, okay? It's not that they're not there. Obviously, they have to be there to hold up the bar, okay, and all of the weight plates on it. But uh, they do not count as external forces because they will not affect the motion of the object we have inside the dotted blue box here, okay? So what is acting on this person and their weight, or the weights that they're holding? Okay, so let me put in a little bit of notation. So first we're going to go, uh, we're going to call this M1. We're going to all call this M2, so mass 1 and mass 2, because uh, we'll refer to the person's mass and also to the bar with all the weight plates mass. And... All of that together, right, is going to feel a force of gravity. So it has weight. The Earth is pulling down on this whole system. And we'll call that force of gravity. Sure. And that's going to be equal to the total mass of this object inside of the dotted blue line. So that's the two masses times g that 9.8 meters per second squared. Okay, now if that was the only force acting on this system of objects, this uh, combination of objects we've got here inside the blue box, well, then you would expect it to be accelerating downwards, gaining velocity downwards, and in, we know that that's not the case. He's standing on the ground, so the ground is going to prevent that from happening. And so ground has to be acting up, with some force. And assuming this person is stationary, uh, these two forces, though I haven't drawn them exactly equal and opposite, would have to be equal and opposite. It's worth noting uh, that these these are not an, a third law pair. They're caused by different things, right? It's the ground acting on the guy, and it's uh, the earth acting on the guy in terms of the force from the ground and the force of gravity respectively. We'll get into that a little bit more, though, uh, down the line. Okay, but these two forces are equal and opposite, okay? Equal in magnitude, opposite in direction. And those are the only ones, I mean, there might be like a wind pushing on him or something like that, but we're not going to consider trivialities of that sort. Um, so, we would know, for instance, that the sum of all the forces here is equal to zero. And what that would look like is that this zero would have to be the force of the ground acting upwards. So, I'll give it a positive sign. And uh, the force of gravity acting downwards. So, I'll give it a negative sign there. 
That's what the, your sum of forces would look like for this free body diagram, where we're considering the weight plates and the bar and the weight lifter all to be a single object, effectively. And we're only looking at the external forces on him. Okay. Now, it's worth saying, like I said at the beginning, that the internal forces, right, the force, for instance, that he obviously has to exert on the bar to keep it and the weight plates from falling to the ground, uh, they're there, okay, they're relevant, but let's, let's take a look at what those look like before we, um, before we move on, okay? So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use this as sort of a, a highlight, and we're first going to focus on uh, the the bar and the weight plates, right? They're all attached together. I'm used to thinking about that as one object. And actually, maybe let me, let's take it over here, okay? We'll put the bar there. And let's look at the forces acting on the bar and the weight plates, okay? So obviously they have some mass, right? This mass was uh, M1, as we called it. And so it's going to experience a force of gravity. Okay, we'll call it force of gravity 1, so F sub G1. And we know that it's stationary, right, as long as, as long as he's holding it up successfully. And so there must be a counterbalancing force acting upwards so that its acceleration, according to the second law, is zero. And we know that, that force must be coming from him pushing up on it. So if we're looking at a free body diagram here of the bar with weight plates, then we can say, okay, well, there's that arrow, and we'll call it... Um, force of, I don't know, person, force of weightlifter, whatever you want to say there, okay? So we have the earth pulling down via gravity, and we have the person holding the thing up, okay? And we know that those have to cancel as well. And then if we look finally at uh, the guy, we grab another color here, so we'll outline him, and uh, I'm not going to be able to do much of a drawing of this person, but we'll put him over here in stick figure form. Okay, there he is, holding up the bar. All hands, legs, some feet. Good, okay. Um, if we look at the forces acting on the person, specifically the weightlifter, well, again, we've got uh, M2. Oh, I'm worth noting that this is M1G over here forgot that for the, the weight plates, okay? But his mass is uh, M sub 2, so just the second object. And let's look at the forces acting on him. We know, for instance, that there has to be a force of gravity, downward, F sub G 2, let's call it, that is M2 times G in magnitude. And we know that if he is pushing up on the bar, right, like he was right over here, okay, well, then the bar has to be pushing down on him, according to the third law, with an equal and opposite force. Now, I haven't drawn my arrows to scale here too well, but um, you'll, you'll hopefully forgive me. Uh, so if the person is pushing up, then the bar is pushing down. And... In addition to that, okay, we have uh, one more force, right? And that force is this one, okay? Because the ground can only act on the guy, the person, whoever, whatever we're calling this person, uh, the ground can only act on him, can't act directly on the bar, okay? Because he is the only one in contact with the ground, right? All our forces are contact forces, unless we're talking about gravity in this course. So that force from the ground is acting upward on the weightlifter, okay? The whole thing. So this ground, this ground force is exactly the same as this ground force, even though I've made my picture a little bit smaller, okay? And you'll note that, uh, though maybe I haven't drawn it perfectly, that the sum of all of the forces on this gentleman is going to be zero as well because he's not accelerating, he's not changing his velocity, he's just staying at zero velocity, staying there with the weights over his head. And that's going to be uh, the force of the ground, upward. That's the one upward force, right? Minus 
the force of gravity, and then, pardon me, as I go on to the second line, uh, the force of the bar acting back on him as he acts on it in, uh, in this free body diagram of the bar and weight plates, okay? Just for completeness, right, the sum of the forces over here, again, would look like zero on the weight plates and bar, and it only has two forces acting on it, the person holding it up and gravity pulling it down, okay? So you would know that those are equal in magnitude, okay? and you could go from there. So a couple of things, right? So when we're looking at the blue box, all of these forces of the person... Let me grab a, a different color here. I guess green would be good. This, this force right here, right, would be present uh, in this system, right? The, the force of the person would be acting up on the bar, and the bar would be acting down on him. But those two forces are, one, internal, so we wouldn't put them on the free body diagram if we were considering the guy and the bar all together. But in addition, because they're a third law pair, right, the bar acts on the guy, the guy acts on the bar, they have to be equal and opposite, and so they're going to cancel out. And so all of those internal forces uh, in these things cancel out if you're considering the bar and the guy together. And this applies to all sorts of systems where you have two objects or more objects interacting with one another. You're only interested in what is external, so say the earth pulling down on it or the ground pushing up on him. Um, you only care what, about what's external acting on them for purposes of calculations with forces. Another way to think about it is when we consider the motion of our own bodies, we generally do not consider all the myriad of little forces that have to be holding the cells of our skin together and the tendons and bone and sinew and all of these things inside of us, holding everything together so that we don't just fall apart onto the ground. <laughs> A little gruesome to think about, but all those internal forces don't really affect our motion. I mean, it makes it so that we can have motion, right? So that our bodies work to how they should work. But in terms of actually accelerating us off the starting blocks for a sprint or wandering across the room or jumping off the ground, none of those forces that are internal to our bodies ever affect the acceleration of our body from point A to point B, okay? So I hope this was useful in distinguishing those things and also for laying out uh, a few little sums of forces equation, equations. And we'll get into more complicated versions of these in future lectures. So thanks for your attention, and I'll talk to you then.